Hey homies, you Fragman here. Welcome to another fragrance review video. Before we get started, I need to apologize for being gone for so long. Um, I think it's been like two weeks since my last review. Um, things have been wild in my life recently and I'm just kind of going through some things, trying to work through some things. Um, but we're here. Uh, I'm back. Uh, back on my regular schedule, schedule I guess. But um, today I really want to talk about Argos. Triumph of Bacchus finally because I've had this for a few weeks now. I've done first impressions already and uh, spoiler alert, I still really really like this fragrance. Um, I wore it today before church and just in the cold air in, in Texas, believe it or not, it was like 30 degrees today. It smells freaking fantastic. But before we get into that, please remember to like and subscribe. Let me know which fragrances you want me to review. I'm thinking about getting the new Dior Homme Sport, uh, the 2020, I guess, 122 version. Um, basically with the new bottle style, new formulation. I'm thinking about getting a bottle of that. If you're interested, let me know. But like, first, let's get into the presentation. So Argos is known, I think, for their presentation. And by far, in terms of like box packaging and extra box packaging, I mean, this is like some of the best packaging I've ever seen in a fragrance. I mean, you can see right here, it sits in this foam cutout, which it fits it like perfectly, basically, like really, really snug. Um, we got the uh, the write-up of the fragrance right here, uh, and then the notes, actually, which I will, speaking of, since I have this out, I think I'll pull the notes from this instead of using for Grantica, but looking at the actual bottle itself, I mean, look at this thing. This is exquisite. Like, this is easily, the most beautiful bottle I have in my collection. It's one of the most expensive as well, um, but in terms of presentation, A plus, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100. This is a banger. This is freaking fantastic. Highly recommend for that alone. But in terms of scent, it is exquisite. It is royal smelling. It is rich smelling. Uh, if, if, if I smell this on anyone, I'm just gonna assume they have a lot of money. And I'm not saying that because I have a lot of money, but that's just the scent that it gives off. It gives off luxury. And I really do think that's what a lot of niche fragrances really go for, but I think sometimes they don't actually hit that mark. Um, you've got stuff like Jubilation from um, um, Waters that is supposed to give that same feeling. I haven't smelled that one yet, but I, I really wanna get it since it's cold now. But this is sexy, it's rich smelling, awesome and let's actually dissect that smell for a minute let's go through the notes we got top notes of saffron white peach green apple and rum notes remember that heart notes of patchouli jasmine tonka bean vetiver base notes of tobacco amber sandalwood vanilla and musk so the main notes i get from this scent are the apples the rum and the tonka and then the saffron a bit so the saffron's weird you get that literally like it's a top note obviously so you're gonna get it right off the top it lingers around and just uh, bear with me do not get this twisted with like baccarat rouge 541 don't get this twisted with with any of these saffron fragrance absolutely it does not smell like that but you do pick up that saffron especially just like smelling it off the cap like i was just doing it smells really really saffron but it does not last like that it really comes down to me, like for what I smell, it becomes like a boozy, sweet apple. It's kind of what I get from it. Imagine, I guess this is a good comparison. Imagine Layton with rum is kind of what I, I, I would describe this fragrance as. It's boozy, it's sweet, it's seductive, it's inviting, it's perfect for winter. I, it, it cuts through the winter air like nobody's business. Uh, in that regard, just right off the top. Uh, looking at the base, we open this up again. Uh, tonka bean again, I mean, just sweetens the fragrance up, but it does not actually add any extra sugar. It's just a clean sweetness. And then the base, the smokiness, tobacco, and the amber help push this fragrance out a lot more. It helps it last a lot longer just in general. And then obviously with the extra vanilla to go with the tonka to sweeten it up again. It's very natural smelling vanilla. This is not a very unnatural smelling fragrance. It's very natural, which I really, really like. Um, I do believe some of these are synthetic. Like obviously the amber is probably synthetic. It's probably not like a real natural amber, but it doesn't smell like that. You know, it's not like Amber Roxanne or anything like that. And then musk, eh, not really, but 
like I said, the easiest way to describe this is a boozy Layton, and I love it. I actually love this a lot more than Layton. I don't own Layton, but I've smelled it a lot. And it's th this goes in the same ballpark as that, but it, it definitely smells a lot more exquisite. This is definitely more of a special occasion fragrance. I would not recommend you wear this daily. Uh, wear this when you want to impress somebody, you know, maybe you're on a date or you're at a wedding, it's freaking freezing outside. Wear this one, or if you're like in an indoor setting, uh, like I said, like a date or like just a company party, whatever. When you're around people in a air conditioned environment, wear this one. Please don't wear this when it's hot. I, I know I say, you know, wear what you want whenever you want to, but I really do think this would just not work in the really high heat. I haven't even attempted to wear it in the Texas heat because I know it's just gonna smell really off on my nasty ass sweaty skin. So I just try to avoid that completely. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a 10 out of 10 for me. This is one of my favorite fragrances that I own now. Um, I barely used it only because I really want to save it. I mean, for 30 mil, this was like 150 bucks, which is freaking insane. Like, I never would have thought I'd spend that much, but I am a huge fan of Argos now. I'm going to try some of the other ones in the future. Um, I'm probably going to lean towards the Pour Homme, Argos Pour Homme for men because that'll be just like, I guess a baseline. Like if, if this is entry, that's like entry plus. It's supposed to be just like a clean, versatile fragrance, which if I'm paying that much, I do want to wear it a lot more than I, than I, you know, would for like this, but that's probably where I'm going to lean to. Um, but yeah, that will be the end of this video. Um, I apologize again for not making a video for a while. I'm sorry. You know, you know what they say, life happens and it happens for everybody, you know, and I really appreciate y'all being so understanding and um, I hope to get y'all more content soon, more high quality content as well. But that'll be the end of this video again. You fragment out.